afternoon, uh, members of the press, and welcome to this briefing uh, as regards COVID-19 in the country, as well as the vaccination campaign. Fellow Kenyans, the Ministry of Health is continuing to monitor the situation with regards to COVID-19 in the country. As you may have probably noticed, the number of cases in the last week has been rising, with a positivity rate hitting close to 13%. However, towards the weekend, the positivity rate has begun to come down. And whereas this might seem like good news, we however urge Kenyans to exercise a lot of caution in terms of our behavior towards the virus. As you are aware by now, the government has been carrying out a robust vaccination campaign against the disease. We have so far administered over 2.8 million doses, with slightly over 800,000 Kenyans being fully vaccinated. We continue to appeal to our people in the priority groups that we have listed to take advantage of this campaign and get vaccinated. Vaccination against this virus, as we have stated many times, is a way to go in terms of containment and curtail, curtailing the spread of the virus. However, we also want to make it clear that no vaccination should take place outside of the ministry's domain. We have been made aware that there are some people who have proposed that they want to carry out their own uh, campaigns, campaign, uh, campaigns outside of what the ministry is currently doing. And we want to make it very clear that there is no vaccinations. There are no vaccinations that should take place outside the Ministry of Health designated vaccination approved sites and by persons approved by the Ministry of Health. If there are any outreaches to be conducted, they must be carried out from the designated vaccination posts. And this applies to both the public and private health facilities. The Ministry of Health, working in collaboration with the county health teams, are solely responsible for the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. This is because they have to ensure the maintenance of the cold chain system and the potency of the vaccines. Vaccines which are not stored in established cold chain facilities and transported to the vaccine posts as per the established protocols, are likely to lose potency and will not be of use to those who receive such vaccinations. Administration of any vaccine should be done by a qualified and duly registered clinician or nursing staff. Those staff must also have received recent training in the administration of the vaccine. Any other person doing so will be in contravention of the law. Vaccinations that are not properly administered will lead to unnecessary side effects that could potentially result in deaths. Ladies and gentlemen, it has come to our notice that some politicians have begun to politicize the vaccination process for their own political gains. This is not only immoral, but unacceptable and very disturbing. This has the potential of endangering the lives of our people and the public in general. The Ministry of Health would therefore like to issue a very stern warning to any person with the intentions to pilfer vaccines from government facilities that will face the full force of the law. 
I, want, I also want to warn any health worker not to collude with outsiders to issue them with vaccines without the authority of the Ministry of Health. Such a situation will lead to immediate disciplinary action. All vaccines issued to counties and health, and health facilities must be accounted for. A weekly county logistics report must forthwith be submitted outlining the doses received, doses used, dose balances, and the number of people vaccinated. Any facility that will not account for doses issued will not be issued with any more vaccine doses and will be delisted. At the same time, any private facility that will be involved in any impropriety will be deregistered with immediate effect. Ladies and gentlemen, for clarity, let me just say the following. There are some facilities that we have learned are charging citizens for vaccinating them. We want to make it very clear. Vaccines are not for sale in Kenya. Vaccines are not for sale in Kenya. And as a citizen, if anybody proposes that you should pay for being vaccinated, I want you to know that they are in violation of the law and you should refuse to pay. In fact, the best thing for you to do is to get vaccinated and then refuse to pay. Let them vaccinate you and refuse to pay. And tell them at that point that you are not supposed to pay. What's the point of uh, them not vaccinating you? Let them vaccinate you. Refuse to pay. If anybody proposes to you that they should pay, at which point you should report so that we can deregister that institution and deregister the person who is charging you. The second point to say is what I said earlier, that there are those who are carrying out health camps, they are calling health camps, with stolen vaccines. There is no way an individual around the country of whatever stature will have vaccines of their own unless they are stolen vaccines. Because when we give a facility, if we give a facility in Roiro or a facility in Ruaka or a facility uh, in Komorok, if we give vaccines to that facility, they are specifically for use in that facility. You cannot take vaccines from one part of the country, take them to Gatanga, and start carrying out vaccination processes there. Nobody knows what vaccines they are using. Nobody knows whether they are actual vaccines or whether it could be anything else that they are vaccinating with. It's a criminal offense. And we want to make it clear that this is not going to be tolerated because by the end of the day, it is people. It is our own people we are endangering. And this is where we again call for citizen responsibility. Do not agree to go to a vaccination facility that you don't know about. You can't see the Ministry of Health people. I have seen pictures of people in jeans and all sorts of attire going around vaccinating people. It's wrong. It's immoral. And to take political advantage of a situation like this and cause death to people, it's really, really, you know, the, 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 the worst and the lowest that an individual can get to. I also want to urge the political class of whatever level that it is getting to a point where you are frustrating us as the Ministry of Health. We cannot have this nonsense of three steps forward and then we come back, we come back all the way to where we were before. We have no bed capacity. Our isolation facilities are full. And yet, you know, people still continue, you know, in, uh, in, 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 in causing crowds to come together. We cannot continue like these people. By the end of the day, if that happens, and we saw it in Kiamba, we saw what happened in Kiamba, we saw the results of the campaigning period in Kiamba, and what happened in Kiambu, where we lost a lot of people, it is obvious 
It's very obvious. If you, if you call crowds in, if you go campaigning, it's obvious that you will kill people. So what is the political cost? What is the political cost that we want to bear when all we are going to do in the coming future is just burying our people? So I once again urge our political class not to be the cause of the problem rather than to, to participate in being a, the solution to the problem. I also want to urge the Kenya Medical, I'm, a, I'm an actually directing the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Board Council to immediately begin to deregister those institutions that uh, are currently uh, charging them as soon as we have got any evidence. The council should also deregister persons who have participated in illegal vaccination processes so that forthwith they do not practice. And the council should also be carrying out investigations, continuous investigations as to the behavior of those in the medical fraternity to ensure that they are not endangering the lives of Kenyans. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to uh, belabor the point. I think we have said enough. I think it's a question of uh, ensuring that what we have proposed is what is followed. But I would also like to, um, to mention and to thank the private sector because effective today, we also now have a structure of the participation by the private sector. Their account of the treasury has been opened. They can now actually proceed to put in money and the process of supplying a private sector with vaccines, which are also going to be administered by the Ministry of Health. There will be no sale of vaccines. The private sector participation is through the Ministry of Health. They simply want to support the efforts of the government so that uh, they can also be players. And we thank them. I want to say a special thank you, you know, to them uh, through the organization that they are currently using. And I also want to ask that those others who have not participated and can do so, you know, to also come forward now that we have got a structure and a method of uh, private sector participation. Thank you all very much. Let me ask um, uh, Dr. Amos to just weigh in a little bit and talk about um, the efficaciousness of the, um, and the danger in some of the things, some of the practices that we have seen from a technical point. Thank you, Waziri. Thank you, Madam Pierce. Uh, just to highlight what Honorable Waziri has said, that vaccines are stored and transported under stringent temperature requirements. And if you move a vaccine from point A to point B without following that protocol, then one, the efficacy of that vaccine would be affected. Number two, that particular vaccine could pose a danger to the public if it is administered. Uh, and number three, as a public health concern, it is important for all of us to ensure that we only get our vaccination from the designated Ministry of Health uh, vaccination points. It is critical that this is done because some of the adverse effects of vaccines which have not been stored well include severe reactions to the vaccines and some of them could lead to what we call anaphyla anaphylaxis and that could even end up in a death situation. So for us to be able to avoid that kind of scenario, it is important that you only go to a Ministry of Health designated vaccination point where we know and we can be able to vouch for the safety and the storage conditions of the vaccines. You should not get vaccination from any other point. And I appeal, to, I appeal to the healthcare workers to be to ensure fidelity to the oath that they swore to ensure the public health of the people by not being compromised by politicians and other people to ensure that they break the rules and regulations that we have put in place to ensure public safety in terms of vaccination deployment plan. Thank you. Right, okay. can take one or two questions at this point.
I think you, are, you have to take a bit of a detour. My name is uh, Lena Domalo from West TV. Uh, my question is uh, uh, on the issue of uh, politicians. It has been said every time, and, and uh, uh, we the other time at Harambe House, you said the, the, the political rallies are banned, and here you are telling us that you are being frustrated. Is the government unable to manage the politicians, or what is the issue that we still have the rallies going on? and uh, increasing the number of uh, people who are, who are being infected. Thank you. Are there are a few Kenyans who've come out to say, there are few Kenyans who are not willing to take the job yet. Maybe what is the Minister of Health doing, especially the elders, because um, of different reasons, including culture, so maybe what's, what's the Minister of Health doing to ensure that uh, these, uh, especially the older citizens, get the job? Then uh, I do understand that we have different types of uh, vaccines in the country and we'll be having more. Will Kenyans be given the opportunity to choose which ones they want to be administered to? Then number three, sorry, <laughs> do we have vaccine uh, defaulters, like people who've taken their first job uh, and yet to receive the second job when uh, it was due. And lastly, how many do vaccines have been stolen? Because you said there are some people who are doing that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Helen Shikanda from Daily Nation. I have three questions. The first one, do we have any update on the adverse events or as a result of the vaccine? And do we have any update on the genomic surveillance, any new variants in the country? And then there is a drug that FDA and CDC yesterday advised against, a COVID drug. Do we have it in the country? Thank you. Thank you. Finally, Shemtai. Yeah, just one last question. Uh, when you warn health workers against being compromised by politicians, have there been scenarios that uh, health workers have sort of been used to carry out uh, individual vaccination uh, drives? Because we've seen politicians trying to call members of the public to get vaccinated because you are heading to a political season and there will be the dilemma of campaigns amid a pandemic. Very well. Um, I think that um, there are quite a number of... Uh, uh, areas that have been touched on uh, and I know that uh, Akwale is here to respond to all the issues regarding the, um, uh, the vaccines. Uh, there was the issue of uh, Omalwa on the matter of the uh, uh, politicians and the spread. Now let me say this, you know we have often said that um, there is a role for each Kenyan to play as far as the fight against this disease is concerned. The frustrations that come to the Ministry of Health are not just those of politicians. It is also those individuals who refuse to follow the rules, knowing very well that um, they are endangering themselves and endangering others. And to pretend that as a, as a ministry, we don't get frustrated by these things is, 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 is frankly not just being honest. The honest position is that uh, there are frustrations that come to the health workers and the doctors and the nurses and the lab people who every day are struggling to contain it, every day are brought more patients that they know we, we shouldn't have had just because of irresponsible behavior and to, and to expect that those people are happy about what is going on, quite frankly, is expecting them to be... Um, to not be human beings. They are human beings. And they are feeling bad about it. And mortations and people in mortuaries, you know, these are workers who are every day seeing the effect of what uh, irresponsible behavior has resorted to. So I think that uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's just the politicians. It is uh, individual discipline. As for politicians, perhaps it is worse because what you are supposed to be providing 
is leadership. We are supposed to be, as politicians, we are supposed to be providing leadership. Leadership on saving Kenyans. Leadership on Kenyans being vaccinated. Leadership on wearing masks. Leadership on, on, on keeping social distancing. Leadership on keeping on washing your hands. This is the leadership that Kenya right now needs. Because it is a leadership that can save their lives. And it is a leadership that can cause continuity of economic activities. But when we pretend, when we pretend that if you go and stop by markets, if we pretend that there is no effect, that there are some people who can go to a marketplace and cause the spread of COVID-19, and some other people who will go to the same place in the marketplace and do not cause COVID-19. I would like to see that formula. You know, I would like to, to get educated on the, in, the, in that area. Because as far as I know, either you are part of the solution to this problem, or you are part of the problem itself. And what we are saying is that uh, what we are looking for is leadership towards uh, resolving this problem. As far as the vaccines are concerned, Purity, the truth of the matter is that currently our problem is not people who are refusing or don't want to take vaccines. Our problem is having sufficient vaccines for those who are willing. You can see queues of people all over the country who are looking for vaccines. So at the moment, we are, we, are, we are dealing with those who want to be vaccinated and can't get them, you know, which is a, which is a, a bigger challenge. Because those who, are, who don't want or those who are reluctant to be vaccinated, we will soon realize the, 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 uh, the advantages of one being vaccinated. So that's not real, a real worry. Of course we are telling Kenyans the advantages of being vaccinated. And even those who have been vaccinated, and have been affected by the virus have seen for themselves you know how mild that has been as opposed to the previous uh, the previous times um, when i say that uh, there are vaccines that the only way the only way that one can have a private vaccinating ceremony is where one has stolen vaccines it is because there is no other way. There is no other way unless you are, a, you, you, are, you are an institution that has been given vaccines. When you see an individual pretending that they have got vaccines for whatever reasons, for whatever purposes, there is no way an individual will have vaccines to vaccinate their own people, their own village, their own cocoon, unless those vaccines have been stolen or unless they have been pilfered out of an institution that has been given the vaccines. Now the danger, of course, is that if we do that, we will be giving vaccines to one county, and then they will be stolen or pilfered from that county and given to other counties, and that's a real danger. So we want to make sure that that does not happen. As I said, private sector, private people can participate they can participate. KEPSA has done a fantastic job. And I want to say thank you to KEPSA through, and through, uh, through Karo Karioki, who is the, the CEO. They have done a fantastic job. So if you want to participate in the private sector acquisition of vaccines, please go to KEPSA. And, we, and you will follow the process, and uh, you may even be able to help. But there is no other way. Uh, so, thank you. Let me uh, ask uh, Akwale to please respond to some of the issues that were raised regarding vaccines. Akwale? Yeah, thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary and members of the Fourth Estate for those good questions and important questions. Let me start with access to the elderly. The very first thing we are doing is to reduce uh, physical distance as a barrier. You know, geographical access meaning the facility you wish you can get the vaccine is not available. It is very far that you cannot reach. So last week, as you heard, the cabinet secretary said, we are increasing our vaccination posts gradually from 800 to 3,000 towards the end of the year. That would therefore mean people can easily access vaccines in facilities close to them. The second way we are addressing those barriers 
is to conduct targeted outreach. And last week you saw us in Transoya, we, we are going to use community health workers who will go to the villages, the elderly people, and get them listed so that they can be a targeted outreach that will be conducted close to them. The other thing we are doing is to really give the information to the elderly because there is this misinformation that if you have hypertension or diabetes or cancer, the vaccine will make your situation worse. The truth of the matter is that more than anybody else, you need that vaccine because those are the conditions that will lead to death. Now, the issue of choice, really the most important choice is either to get vaccinated or not. If you decide not to get vaccinated, the time to be sorry will come. When you get the severe disease, you have to be in hospital, in oxygen, piping, and unfortunately death. So the choice first and foremost, get vaccinated. This issue of which vaccine is better than the other, we have said it time and again. There has never been a single study globally that compared these vaccines when it comes to prevention of severe disease. In the trials that were done, they were all 100%. And even now, under deployment, they are all between 98 and 96%. So really, you don't have that luxury. In, the, in times of scarcity, if you are going to say, I'm waiting, unfortunately, you may be a statistic when the vaccines start becoming more available. So really, at this time, even as part of deployment, we do not want vaccine going to waste because somebody has made an informed decision that vaccine A is better than vaccine B. These vaccines are the same. We have this clarion call. The vaccine in your body is the best vaccine. The issue of defaulters, where, yes, we do have some defaulters. We have been looking through our change of system. About 100,000 people, by the time we began the second dose, have not received the second, uh, their second dose. And a bit of it is because of what we've said. Some are saying, I'm waiting for Johnson & Johnson. I want to get Moderna or I want to get Pfizer. We are really telling them, AstraZeneca is also there insufficient. You need to get that second dose because we've not adopted the policy of mix and match yet. Uh, and what we'll be doing is through the change system, we are going to be getting alerts on anybody who has defaulted, and we are going to work with community health workers to reach to those that are going to be def uh, defaulting. Finally, on the issue of adverse events, yes, through our system by last week, we had slightly over 1,000 adverse events reported. There were six that were being closely monitored, uh, but none of the side events has been any serious. We have not had any fatality, uh, and those that are closely monitored, there are indications for them, and they may be monitored for a period of time, and if nothing happens, then that is really closed. So well over 1,000 events have been reported through the pharmacy board system and through our change of system. Thank you. I think uh, Helen, Helen had asked something about uh, the variants. Variants. Uh, I can respond to that. Uh, yeah. Uh, our latest genomic sequencing still clearly shows that the Delta variant is the predominant variant at about 95-96%. And we have not uh, registered any other variant of concern in the recent past. Regarding the medicine you talked about, I think you are talking of either remdesivir. Yeah, those are still trial drugs, as you all know. There is clearly no medicine that can be used for corona, uh, COVID disease. So very many trial drugs are in the pipeline, including remdesivir, which is also approved and registered by PPB and can be accessed. And actually our patients have also been able to access that. On top of that, of course, there are other trial medicines, including uh, tozilizumab, which is also being used by our clinicians on a trial basis. But I think the clarion call still says the same, get vaccinated. All these other medicines are on trial basis. Thank you. So as I said, finally, is just to say that, uh, as you are aware, there were the directives that were given by the, by the president in his last address to the nation. He made it very clear that people will carry personal responsibility to uh, misbehavior. And all we are saying and asking our agencies is that let it be so. I think uh, there, there comes a time when uh, push becomes shove, and we are getting there. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.